Tuscaloosa to Frenzy! Yeah, it's tough. It's caught! It's caught! Crimson Tide is dancing into the Sweet 16 for the second year in a row. Roll Tide and welcome inside the Crimson Tide production studio inside Bryant Denny Stadium. I'm Roger Hoover, joined by my co-host Lillian Everest. And Lillian, it's really great to finally be back in town. It's great to have you back, Roger. We're excited. I'm excited to be here with you today. Absolutely. Also great that the Crimson Tide are in the Sweet 16 for the second consecutive year and the third time in the last four years the 10th time in program history Alabama has made it to the Sweet 16 and it all started with a round one win over 13th seed College of Charleston. Alabama used a 12-0 run to take a 17-point lead at the half 51 to 34. In the second half Alabama led by as many as 31 as the Tide rolled to their 10th game of the season scoring 100 or more points. The nation's number one scoring offense set a new school record for most points in an NCAA tournament game with 109 as the Tide rolled to the round of 32 with the 109-96 win over the College of Charleston. You win games in March with guard play. I think that's true. These guys here, you know, combined for 60 points. It's pretty good uh, play out of your guards, you know. Aaron and Mark had 13 assists to two turnovers, you know, and then Trelly and Mark go combined 8 to 12 from, uh, from three, which is shooting it pretty well. So thought our guards played well. I thought our bigs uh, were, were pretty good at times too. It, you know, I thought we did a good job rebounding it when we were able to open up a lead. And then, you know, this is a team in Charleston that likes to play somewhere else. So it's two teams that want to run. So it was a heavy possession game. And, you know, that's kind of why you end up with the points you end up with. Along with the 109 points being the most in school history for an NCAA tournament game, it was also a new SEC record for 100-point games in a season with 10. All-American Mark Sears led the way with a game-high 30 points to go along with five assists. Latrell Wrightsell Jr. shot 83% from the three-point land, knocking down five of six as he scored 17, while Aaron Estrada had a great all-around game with 13 points, eight assists, and seven rebounds. Alabama took care of business against the 13th seed College of Charleston, and the Tide's round two matchup would be against another double-digit seed in Grand Canyon. Yeah, 12 seed or not, the Lopes were WAC champions at 30 and 4, and also had just knocked off fifth seeded St. Mary's. It was a physical game from the start, with Alabama leading all but 57 seconds in the first half. With the score tied at 28 all, the Crimson Tide finished the half on a 10 and 2 run to take a 38 to 30 lead at the intermission. Grand Canyon took the lead back with just over six minutes to play at 58 to 55, but from there, Alabama closed out the game on a 17 to two run, including scoring the final 10 points of the game as Alabama advanced to the Sweet 16 for the second year in a row with the 11 point win, 72 to 61. Every last one of you came in, made tough plays, and we didn't fall. We had, we, we could have folded easy. All right, a lot of stuff went wrong. We didn't fold. You guys stuck. Look. Unbelievable job. We're, put, we're 16 teams left after tonight. Yes, we're one of them. All right, we're, we're going to get you prepared. All right, obviously we're going to have to play a lot better. We know that, but we are. All right, so, hey, unbelievable job. Like, like oh, you great job. Hey, go, hey, go, hey, 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 hey. I got together, you got to win. The Alabama defense was swarming as the Tide collected 10 steals and had a season-high and NCAA tournament best nine block shots. Mark Sears also joined Mo Williams as the only players in school history to record 25 points, 10 rebounds, and five assists in an NCAA tournament game. Alabama faces North Carolina in the Sweet 16 for a chance to go to the Elite Eight. With a win over the Tar Heels, it would be just the second time in school history that the Crimson Tide have made it to the Elite Eight. The Alabama women's basketball team also played in the NCAA tournament this past week. We'll have the highlights and more from the Tide's trip to Austin coming up next right here on Tide TV This Week. Tide TV This Week is presented by the University of Alabama where legends are made. Ford, visit your local Ford dealer, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. And for the first time since 2010, the Alabama Crimson Tide is an NCAA 
Here today as we introduce Rob as the next head coach of Alabama baseball. I don't need to sell Alabama. Start the party for the right field Rangers. This program has laid the foundation. Now it's time for us to knock down the gates of Omaha. And we're going to do that here real soon. Welcome back to the Crimson Tide Production Studio inside Bryant Denny Stadium. I'm Roger Hoover, joined alongside Lillian Everest. And Lillian, it's March. You know what that means. March Madness. Yeah, and for the second year in a row, the Alabama men's and women's basketball teams both went dancing in the NCAA tournament. We covered the men first, now first two rounds. Now let's cover the women's team as the eight seed Crimson Tide took on the ninth seed Florida State in Austin, Texas. Alabama shot 50% from the floor and from beyond the arc as the Tide connected on 7 of 14 shots from 3. The score was tied at 40 all at the half, but a huge third period was the difference. The Crimson Tide outscored the Seminoles 23-11 to, to take a 63-51 to lead into the final 10 minutes of play. Alabama held on throughout the fourth to advance to the second round with the 82-74 to win over Florida State. Florida State had an incredible year and they're a really great team and just so proud of our kids today and their resilience. We fought through some foul trouble, our leading score, and we just had um, so many of our, our players step up today and I'm just incredibly proud. I think there's nothing better this time of year I've learned through the years than watching your team celebrate and I'm just uh, incredibly proud and we're looking forward to the opportunity. We'll enjoy this till midnight and like all season we'll hit the reset button and prepare and try to go out and execute the game plan against a great Texas team. Essence Cody led the way for the Crimson Tide with career highs in both points and rebounds. Cody recorded her third double-double of the season as she finished with 20 points and 12 rebounds. Crimson Tide had three more scoring double figures as Aaliyah Nye and Carly Weathers each scored 18, while Loyal McQueen finished the game with 13. That win was the second in the NCAA Women's Tournament in the last four years, and just the second since Rick Moody carried the Tide to the second round back in 1999. With the first round win over number nine seed Florida State, Alabama advanced to the second round matchup with Big, Twin, Big 12 champion and number one seed Texas. It was a tight contest throughout the first half. Alabama trailed just by just three after the first period, 17 to 14. The Tide cut the deficit to just one at 23 to 22 on this layup from Carly Weathers, but the Longhorns extended their lead back out to seven at the half. Alabama played tough in the second half with Texas outscoring the Tide by just four in the second half. The Tide had a great showing, but it wouldn't be enough to pull off the upset as number one seed Texas advanced to the Sweet 16 with a 65 to 54 win over the Crimson Tide. Been on a 10 month journey with an incredible group of young women. Um, in our program, we have three core values, grit, love, and gratitude. And the grittiness of this group, the love that they have for the front of their chest in a day and time where that's unique, and the love that they have for each other in the game, um, and just, just the gratitude every day um, to go about their business on and off the floor. I'm just incredibly proud to be their coach. I'm incredibly proud of the 24 wins. You know, we had two returning starters from a year ago and, and five people in that locker room. And so the leadership that these three – these two up here with me, it's just been really amazing. So I told them how incredibly proud I was of them. We're not going to talk about what we didn't do well enough today. We're going to talk about all the things that we did well on a 10-month journey with as special of a group as I've been, ever, ever had a season with. So I'm incredibly proud of them. Alabama finished the season with a 24-10 overall record. This year's tournament appearance also made it the third time in the last four years that Coach Curry and the Crimson Tide have made it to the NCAA tournament. Yeah, and head coach Ashley Johnston and the Alabama gymnastics team is also competing in the postseason. The seventh-ranked Jim Tide was in New Orleans this past weekend competing for the SEC championship. Alabama started on floor and earned a tie for first place after the opening rotation as the Tide had four gymnasts score 9-9 or better. Corinne Boonigan and Luisa Blanco each scored a 9-9 on vault to keep the Tide in the top two. Chloe LaCourcier and Luisa Blanco bookended the uneven bars with 9-9-2-5s. Then on the final event, the Crimson Tide rolled to a 49-55, its second highest beam score this season, as that helped the Crimson Tide secure second place overall with a team score of 197-75. 
It was the 25th consecutive year the Crimson Tide has finished in the top three and also the 21st time Alabama has finished in the top two. Alabama is still the only program in the league to never finish outside the top four. And with that finish, Coach Johnson's squad advanced to the NCAA championships. The Crimson Tide will compete at the Ann Arbor, Michigan Regional. Oklahoma will be the number one seed with Alabama earning the number two seed. And joining them will be number nine, Michigan, and the 16th seed, North Carolina State. The Tide will begin competition on Thursday, April 4th. The Alabama football team held their first scrimmage of the spring on Thursday. We'll hear Coach DeBoer's thoughts on his first scrimmage as the head coach of the Crimson Tide when we return. Your fan base is, is one like no other. All right, it's, that's for real. What you got here, your home field advantage is for real. In front of a full house at the Rhodes House. And it goes to the wall. Crimson Tide football team held their first scrimmage of the spring on Thursday. The scrimmage was Alabama's eighth practice of the spring, as well as the first scrimmage under new head coach Kalen DeBoer. Along with Thursday's scrimmage, the Tide also practiced on Tuesday. With two weeks of spring practice left, the Crimson Tide have seven practices remaining and will return to practice four times next week on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. Let's hear Coach DeBoer's thoughts on his first scrimmage as head coach of the Crimson Tide. Uh, I felt good about it. Each side, uh, you know, always wants it a little bit better uh, just because, um, you know, there were some missed opportunities here and there that could take advantage of. But uh, really good job by our guys uh, coming out and competing. I uh, thought we played very physical today, um, you know, and that's what you're going to get when you get out there and, and it's live. But um, execution um, always can be better. I'd expect uh, that improvement from practice one to practice two. But uh, for the most part, I was really pleased with where we're at. The 15th and final practice of the spring will take place on Saturday, April 13th for the Tide's annual A-Day game in Bryant-Denny Stadium. Our Chris Franklin caught up with one of the leaders on the defensive side of the ball after practice and this week's fresh off the field. I'm here inside the Hank Cripps indoor practice facility fresh off the field with linebacker Jihad Campbell. Jihad, you're about the midway point of spring practice. How's everything going so far? It's been fun. It's been exciting. You know, just being around those guys, everybody's, uh, you know, high on energy. You know, just, just ready the ball, man. That's it. Got a new defensive coordinator and Coach Womack. Just kind of talk about him. Just kind of talk about the defense so far. Um, coach Womack, man, he's a great coach. Uh, you know, just, just meeting him, uh, you know, once he came in here. Great coach, man. He's a very, very intelligent guy, uh, very, real smart. Uh, he knows how to coach, you know, specific details of, of linebackers and, um, you know, just understanding defensive uh, schemes and stuff like that. Let's talk about Coach DeBoer. Um, you know, you were recruited by Coach Saban and, and committed and played under him, but now <clears throat> you got Coach DeBoer in. What has he been like, you know, and just what are your thoughts of him so far? Just winning mindset, man. You know, he always uh, talks about just being one to know every day, and that's what we do every day out on the field and off the field too. Now, what would you tell fans what to expect from this Alabama defense coming up this year? Expect everything out of us, man. You know, we 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 keep on, you know, just have, having you guys, man, support us, man. We we, we absolutely love it. And, you know, without, like without y'all, we nothing, honestly. So appreciate the fans. Y'all keep on rolling with the tie, and we got y'all back. Well, Jihad, you're a guy that you were one of the young guys. Now you're kind of becoming one of the leaders on this team. Just kind of talk about that transformation for you and, and what's that like being a leader? Uh, I think it was, you know, just really uh, when I was coming up as a freshman, just understanding how to be a leader in the role of being a leader, you know, from the guys like Oil Anderson, uh, uh, Chris Braswell, Henry Toto, uh, Dallas Turner, even right now, too, Deontay Lawson. You know, that's, that's a brother of mine. Uh, he definitely helped me uh, just pay the way and step by step, you know, to get to this point. But, you know, we got, we still got uh, some more to prove, so. Well, lastly, Jihad, A-Day is coming up only just a couple weeks away. Coach Saban's first A-Day, 92,000 plus fans were here. It kind of set the trend of having a lot of people at Fan Day. What would you say to the Alabama fans about coming to A-Day and supporting you guys? How much does it mean to you? It means a lot, man, you know, especially to the whole organization and to, uh, especially to these new coaches, you know, to see um, how, you know how, how the whole town gets uh, when when football arrives. You know, just for just for the fans, man, we really appreciate you guys just coming out there as we compete, watching us compete, and doing our thing. So appreciate y'all a lot. Well, thank you, Jihad. We appreciate it. Good luck on the upcoming season. Roll Tide, and can't wait to see you on a day. Roll Tide, man.
present time is an NCAA region. Here today as we introduce Rob as the next head coach of Alabama baseball. I don't need to sell Alabama. Start the party for the right field Rangers. This program has laid the foundation. Now it's time for us to knock down the gates of Omaha. And we're going to do that here real soon. Welcome back to Tide TV This Week. It was a top 15 showdown this past weekend as the 13th ranked Alabama softball team stepped out of conference play to take on a team from the ACC. And that SEC and ACC matchup took place on Friday and Saturday here in Tuscaloosa. And our Mary Reagan Bowling has the highlights and more from this past weekend's showdown at Rhodes Stadium. This past weekend held a huge ACC-SEC matchup as 13th ranked Alabama softball hosted 12th ranked Virginia Tech for a two-game series here at Rhodes Stadium. It was a pitcher's duel in game one as the Crimson Tide got a stellar performance from Caleb Beaver in the circle. It was scoreless until the fifth inning when Kendall Clark got a big hit and RBI single back up the middle to bring Kenley Payton from second to make it one to nothing. Fast forward to the seventh, the Tide got two incredible defensive plays from Kenley Cahalan. This throw from deep short near the third base bag got the first out of the inning. Then Kahalen shows her range, snagging this ground ball up the middle near second base back to get out number two in the inning. Beaver does the rest, a swing and a miss, and Beaver's sixth strikeout of the night slammed the door on the Hokies as the 13th ranked Crimson Tide got the win over 12th ranked Virginia Tech in game one, one to nothing. For day two, Alabama was facing a three-run deficit in the bottom of the seventh, but Kendall Clark bounced a hard hit ball into the right field corner for a leadoff triple. After a pop out for out number one, Lauren Esmond pulled a single through the right side of driving Clark and make it a 3-1 to one game. Kendall Cahalan tied the score with her second triple of the day, driving in two before a strikeout in the rally and sent the game into extra inning. However, it was all Virginia Tech in the eighth, scoring five runs as the Hokies bounced back with an 8-3 to three win in game two. Despite the loss on Saturday, Coach Murphy was still pleased with the win in game one and how the team kept their composure and battling it out in game two and forcing into extra innings. Uh, their offense showed it today, especially in the last inning. But I was really proud of our group in the bottom of the seventh uh, to tie it up and have the winning run at third base. Just a really good series between good team, good two teams, and um, you know, well pitched I thought by both sides. With a split in this top 15 ACC SEC matchup, the Crimson Tide are 25 and six as they prepare to travel to Lexington to take on 23rd ranked Kentucky. Reporting from Rhodes Stadium, I'm Mary Reagan Bolig with Tide TV. Thank you, Mary Reagan. The eighth-ranked Alabama baseball team stayed in conference play this past weekend as the Tide traveled to Athens to take on the Georgia Bulldogs. Unfortunately, the Tide dropped all three games, but bounced back on Tuesday night against Belmont in Huntsville at the home of the Rocket City Trash Pandas. Alabama jumped out to a 5-0 lead with the help on this home run off the bat of TJ McCants. The Tide used five pitchers as Sam Mitchell picked up his second win of the year and Alton Davis got the save, his fourth of the year, as Alabama improved to 19-6 with the 6-3 win over Belmont. Alabama returns to SEC play this weekend as the 15th ranked Tide takes on number 10 ranked South Carolina for a three game series. And the Alabama men's tennis team was in action here in Tuscaloosa this past weekend as the Tide hosted a couple of SEC teams. Against Arkansas on Friday, the 69th ranked doubles team of Philip Planishek and Andre Zimnock upset the 29th ranked duo of Bozo Barron and Jared Hornwood to give Alabama the doubles point. From there, the Crimson Tide won four out of five singles matches to pick up the 5 2 win over the Razorbacks. Then on Sunday, George Husak's squad picked up their fourth win in a row with a 5-2 win over LSU. That win improved the Tide's record to 15-8 overall and moved the Tide back into the top 25 at number 21. And congratulations to Andre Zimnock as he was named the Southeastern Conference Co-Freshman of the Week. Playing in the number two spot in the lineup, he went undefeated on the weekend and has won five straight singles matches. The 21st ranked Alabama women's tennis team dropped a 5-2 decision to Ole Miss this past weekend, but the Tide did pick up a 4-0 sweep of the Mississippi State Bulldogs on Friday to improve to 14-4 overall on the year. The Alabama women's swimming and diving team had five student athletes pick up 10 All-America honors, including three from Avery Wiseman. Wiseman picked up second team All-America honors in the 100 and 200 press joke events and in the 200 medley relay. The men's team are competing in the NCAA championships this week in Indianapolis. The Alabama track and field team picked up a trio of first place finishes and 23 top 10 finishes to open the outdoor season this past weekend in Starkville. Amani Heaven took home a first place finish in the women's discus throw, while Victoria Faber took home first place in the women's pole vault. 
The Tide also swept the women's 3,000 meter, with Crawford West taking first place. The six-ranked Alabama men's golf team finished tied for 10th with a score of 7 over par at the Vals Park Invitational in Palm City, Florida. Cannon Claycomb earned his fifth top 20 finish of the season as he finished 16th, leading the Tide at 2 under par. And congratulations to the Alabama soccer team as they improved to 3-0 on the spring season with a big 3-1 win over Tennessee this past Saturday. Stay with us. We'll have our players and plays of the week coming up next in just 90 seconds. Tide TV This Week is presented by the University of Alabama, where legends are made. Ford, visit your local Ford dealer, proud sponsor of the Crimson Tide. Your fan base is, is one like no other. All right, it's, that's for real. What you got here, your home field advantage is for real. In front of a full house at the Rhodes House. And it goes to the wall. Special March Madness edition of our Plays of the Week brought to you by Legacy of Hope. Now let's take a look at our Players of the Week, and we have to stick with the March Madness theme on this one, Roger. <laughs> that we do, as Mark Sears averaged 28 points, 5.5 assists, and 8 rebounds in Alabama's first and second round wins to lead the Crimson Tide to the Sweet 16. And freshman Essence Cody had a career best day in Alabama's first round win over Florida State. Cody finished with career bests in both points and rebounds as she scored 20 and grabbed 14, bo 14 boards for her third double-double of the year. Great week of basketball for the Crimson Tide, and hopefully we'll be talking about a trip to the Final Four in next week's show. Roll Tide to that. And thanks for joining us this week for another episode of Tide TV This Week. We'll see you next week right here, same time, same channel. You can also watch us online at RollTide.com and on the official UA Athletics page on YouTube. We'll see you next week, everyone. Roll Tide. Roll Tide. This has been a presentation from Learfield.